Welcome to our lecture online. Now here we have kind of a classic problem dealing with electric fields. We were given two charges placed on the x-axis, and this is indeed the x-axis, and we're trying to find the point on the x-axis where the electric field equals zero. Besides points at infinity, of course, if you're infinitely far away from any charge, the electric field will always be zero. But where on the x-axis, relatively close in proximity, will the electric field be zero, and that will be the point where the two electric fields from the two charges perfectly cancel each other out. To figure out how to do that, well, let's see here. We'll start out by, just like everything else, we start drawing the vectors relative to the electric fields emanating or moving towards or pointing towards these charges. For a positive charge, the electric field points away from the charge. So on the right side, we have an electric field pointing to the right, like so, and on the left side, the electric field points to the left. All right, now for the negative charge, the electric field is towards the charge, so on the right side, notice that the electric field will be pointing towards the charge, this way. On this side, the electric field will be pointing towards the charge. Now, the only place where the electric field could potentially be zero is where the two electric fields point in opposite directions. If they point in the same direction, then they're additive and the electric field could never be zero, which means in, this, in the region between the two charges, you could never have a zero electric field. It could only exist there or there, potentially. Now, you can see that in this region right here, the electric field is here you're closer to this charge than you are to this charge. Over here, you're closer to this charge than you are to this charge. But since this charge is much larger than this charge, and on the left side here, you're always closer to the bigger charge than you are to the smaller charge, this electric field will always overpower this electric field, so you can never find a zero electric field at this location. So this is also not a good place. The only place where you could have a zero electric field is over here because this field is from a larger charge, but it's farther away. This field is from a smaller charge, but you're closer by. So there you could potentially have a point where the two cancel each other out. So what we're going to do is assume that there's some point right here where the electric field is zero. The question is, where is that? And we're going to assume that it's a distance x away from the negative charge. And so what we're going to do now is find what that x is equal to. So that means that the electric field from, or I'm going to add up the two electric fields, so the electric field from charge 1 added to the electric field from charge 2 should add up to 0. That means that 0 is equal to the magnitude of E1. So now what we need to do, of course, is find the magnitudes of each of these two electric fields. So E1, at this particular point right here, E1 is going to be equal to K, Q1 divided by D1 squared, which is equal to 9 times 10 to the 9th newtons per coulomb. The charge Q1 is 10 microcoulombs, that's 10 to the minus 6, divided by the distance between them. Now, distance 1 squared would be the total distance of 2 meters plus the distance x. So that in this case would be 2 plus x quantity squared. So that's the electric field at point x, or at point a distance x past the negative charge, for caused by q1. For e2, that will be equal to k, Q2 divided by D2 squared, so that would be equal to 9 times 10 to the 9th newtons per coulomb. The charge will be 4 microcoulombs, and again, we only take the magnitude of that charge, because we don't care if it's negative or positive, we just want the magnitude of the electric field, divided by the distance, which would be x squared. Okay, now we're ready to go ahead and plug that in here. So E1 would be equal to 9 times 10 to the 9th newtons per coulomb times Q1, which is 10 times 10 to the minus 6 
and in the denominator we end up with 2 plus x quantity squared plus, oh, now we have to be careful because, after all, we're adding vector quantities. Notice E1 is pointing to the right, so that's a positive, and so that would be in the x direction, minus, because the electric field caused by negative charge is pointing to the left, so that's going to be a minus quantity, so that's going to be 9 times 10 to the 9th newtons per coulomb. The charge will be 4 times 10 to the minus 6, again that will be the magnitude right here, divided by x squared, and that also is in the x direction. Okay, right away we can see that we can divide both sides of the equation by 9 times 10 to the 9, so these cancel out. We can get rid of 10 to the minus 6, that cancels out. Both sides, we can get rid of the, the x direction. Now what we're going to do is place everything, um, we're going to move this to the other side and set those equal to each other. So now we have on the left side, we end up with 10 divided by 2 plus x quantity squared. On the right side, we are going to end up with 4 divided by x squared. So now we end up with that equation by canceling everything else that we can. Now we have to cross multiply, so let's come over here and finish the job. So on the left side, we end up with 10x squared. On the right side, 4 times 2 plus x quantity squared. Working everything out, we have 10x squared is equal to 4 times 4 plus 4x plus x squared. Multiplying this out, we get 10x squared is equal to 16 plus 16x plus 4x squared. And then moving everything over to one side, we end up with 0 is equal to 6x squared minus 16x minus 16 equals 0. And now we're ready to go ahead and solve this problem. Using the quadratic equation, we can say that x, which is what we're looking for, is equal to 16 plus or minus the square root of, uh, let's see, that would be 16 squared minus 4 times a times c, which is a minus 16, all divided by 2a, which is 12. All right, let's see what we end up with. So we end up with, we're going to end up with uh, here, let's see, this is going to be equal to 16 plus or minus what's inside the radical. That's uh, 16 squared plus 4 times 6 times 16 equals, take the square root, gives us 25.3. So 16 plus or minus 25.3 divided by 12. Now the negative cannot work for us because 16 minus 25 gives us a negative number and we're looking indeed for a positive x. So the negative is not a good answer, so we're going to add those two together. So plus 16 divided by 12 and we end up with 3.44 meters. So this is equal to 3.44 meters and that's our answer right here. Okay, now to make sure we have this correct, let's calculate the electric field in each case using the proper value right here and make sure we get the, the right result in each case. So for E1, and I'll use a different color so we can see that we're just checking. For E1, we end up with uh, 3.44 plus 2. We're going to square that, take the inverse of that, times 9e to the 9th, times 10e to the 6 minus equals, that gives us, hmm, 3,040, if I can see it right, there we go. So that's equal to 3,040 newtons per coulomb. Let's see what we get for E2. So for E2, we're going to use uh, 3.44 squared at, take the inverse of that, times 9e to the 9 times 4e to the 6 minus equals, and sure enough, I get 3,040 as well. So it looks like it worked. This is indeed the distance to the right of the negative charge where the electric field will be zero. And that's how it's done.